Hello, welcome back. Uh, this is Bill Harris again, uh, following up from our live chat last week about the Reduce It and Vital studies. These are two studies that were published about a week ago in the New England Journal. Uh, there's been some controversies about these omega-3 based trials. And so uh, as promised, we wanted to come back this week and talk about some of those controversies and some of the issues involved. So let me start off with uh, the vital study. Again, this study is published in the New England Journal. Joanne Manson was the senior author of the study. Um, and this study just briefly was in around 25,000 generally healthy older Americans who were randomly assigned either placebo or vitamin D, 2,000 units a day, or omega-3, about 840 milligrams a day, one capsule of Lovesa or Omicor. Um, a combination of those two or neither one. So then they were followed for about five years and they, the, then the investigators uh, measured how many different cardiac events essentially uh, occurred in that population. They also had cancer as an endpoint, but we're not talking about that at this point. So there have been, regarding vital, there have been contradictory, or meet contradictory media reports about what this study showed. You'll find some newspapers or, or outputs, outlets saying that there was no effect. Fish oils had no effect in the study. Other ones will say fish oil lowered uh, rates of uh, myocardial infarction, heart attacks. And you're going, what's going on here? And uh, I want to cover a little bit of what's happening, why this is happening. And it has to do with the difference between a composite endpoint and a single out endpoint, single outcome. Uh, because this is where this problem shows up. And if my videographer will come over and we'll look at the actual report from the paper itself. Uh, this right here called primary endpoint cardiovascular events, that's what's called the primary, uh, it's obviously the primary endpoint. And this is a combination of three things, total myocardial infarction, total stroke, and death from cardiovascular causes. So as the study went on, people had, in this study, some people had heart attacks, some people had strokes, some people actually died from a cardiovascular event. So they just added up those kind of events and they put it all together in this primary endpoint. It's a composite endpoint. And what happened, and so this is the one that the, the, strict, uh, the strict interpretationists would say we only look at that endpoint. Since that's been defined by the authors as the primary, that's all we look at. And so when you look at that endpoint, we pop over here, and here I'll have to explain what these numbers mean. Uh, this means there were 386 of composite this event in the omega-3 group over that five-year period and there were 419 of that composite endpoint, uh, endpoint in the placebo group. So if you do, very simply do the math here's what's called a hazard ratio and the hazard ratio is this number and it tells you really what is there any difference between these numbers. If these two numbers were identical the hazard ratio would be 1.0 and <clears throat> If the hazard ratio is less than one, like this, 0.92, because there was less events in this group than there were in this group, uh, then <clears throat> that's essentially an 8% reduction. So uh, subtract uh, this value from 100 and you get the percent change. So the re an 8% reduction, and then we have this thing here called the 95% confidence interval. And this tells you the, that we're 95% sure that this estimate, 0.92, is somewhere between 0.8 and 1.06. So that's the, called 95% confidence interval. And the tradition is, the, the, uh, what, would be, what would you call it, the uh, convention is that if this range spans one, if, if it's above and below one, then it's not a statistically significant outcome. We can't be better than 95% sure that this is real. So for this primary endpoint, the reduction was 8%, but the 95% confidence interval went from 0.8 to 1.06, so we would say that's not statistically significant. That's where the headlines came from, say there was no effect. But if you look at the three different components of this primary endpoint, total myocardial infarction, so heart attacks, 145 versus 200. 
And that, as we see here, had a hazard ratio of 0.72, meaning a 28% reduction in risk for heart attack. And the confidence interval went from 0.59 to 0.9, which means it did not cross 1.0. So this is just a statistically significant finding. There were significantly less heart attacks. Now, there, were no diff there was no difference in the number of strokes. There was no difference in the number of deaths from cardiovascular disease. So these two endpoints washed out the effect of this one so that the composite was not significantly affected. But obviously, if you just look, ask the question, was there, a <clears throat> was there an effect of, <clears throat> pardon me, omega-3s on any cardiovascular endpoint? Yes, total myocardial infarction was significantly reduced. So that's a great finding, especially if we're only giving people 840 milligrams a day to find this. Uh, this is a spectacular reduction in risk for heart attack from a very low dose. So it's the fact that some media outlets emphasize the different components of the composite, others just emphasize the total. If you say, if you just focus on the total, you get no effect. If you focus on total heart attacks, you get a significant effect. So it's just a matter of what you want to uh, focus on. So that's fundamentally the problem here with these media reports. I talked a little bit about hazard ratio, confidence interval, statistical significance. Just to, just to reiterate that, I've blown up this sign here for total myocardial infarction. There were 145 events over the five years in the omega-3 group, 200 in the placebo group. The hazard ratio, again, 0.72 means that's a 28% reduction. And since this confidence interval, 0.59 to 0.9, does not overlap one, it's statistically significant. We can't exactly say what the P value is or the statistical significance in the traditional sense. We just know it's statistically significant less than one chance in 20 that that is uh, a, a random finding. Uh, so other things that have come up in the Bible study, I think the, the <clears throat> one observation in that study was that African-American patients, or not patients, African-American people who were in the study, had a 77% risk reduction <clears throat> for the primary endpoint of cardiovascular disease. Uh, that was very statistically significant, but it was only seen, uh, like there were like three events in the omega-3 group and 39 events in the, or something like, or maybe 13 in, in 39. But it was a statistically significant big drop in risk. That is the kind of thing that you would say, well, we didn't expect that. We had no plans, we've never seen that before. That is the kind of finding that does need confirmation that should be held tentatively. Uh, another, so this should be done in an, another study should now be done to focus on an African American population and see if the omega-3 treatment uh, has this effect again. Uh, let me go down now to the second study uh, that was our topic last week and this is the REDUCE IT trial. Again, REDUCE IT was a study that was drug, done with a drug, an omega-3 drug called Valsepa, which is, which is pure EPA. Uh, it was done in about 8,000 patients, roughly. Uh, it was an international study. There were lots of different centers around the world. Uh, <clears throat> it was uh, done by a pharmaceutical company called Amarin. And the first author of the paper was uh, Dr. Bott, uh, also published in the same issue of the New England Journal as the uh, Dr. Manson's paper. Uh, the REDUCE IT study uh, really was a, a, a study using a very high dose of omega-3. Um, and maybe I'll just talk about that since I mentioned it. Uh, because there was four grams per day of EPA given in this study, uh, which is four times higher than the average dose that's given in these trials. Um, that makes the study unique. The other thing that makes the study unique is the fact that they used EPA only instead of EPA plus DHA, which is normal, which like is in Lovesa or in most dietary supplements. So the question is, the benefits that were seen in the study, and the benefits were very clear, very, very statistically significant, roughly a 25% reduction in risk for cardiac events uh, was seen in people given uh, the VASIPA which is a spectacular outcome, uh, particularly since everybody in that study was also on a statin to begin with. 
So the question is, was it because it's an EPA-containing product, or was it because the dose was high? Uh, and honestly, I don't think we can say at this point. Uh, if I had to pick, my impression would be that the fact that a very high dose was given, uh, which is important to get tissue levels up. Uh, we will not, we, we can't tell if it was just because of the EPA, um, but there, we will be able to know this in about a year when another study is going to be reported that used EPA plus DHA, also at four grams a day, uh, in the same, virtually the same patient population, uh, and that's called the STRENGTH study that's being done uh, by a company called AstraZeneca using a product called Epinova or Epinova. So that, that you, next year when we see the results of that, giving EPA plus DHA at four grams a day, if we get the same benefit as was seen with the EPA only, then we'll conclude that it's really the dose that was important, not so much which fatty acid. Uh, one of the big controversies about the reduced study has to do with the placebo that was used in, in that trial. Now, a placebo is sometimes called a sugar pill. Uh, strictly speaking, in these kinds of studies, you have to give some kind of an oil because the active agent, EPA or uh, EPA plus DHA, like what was given in uh, the, the vital study, they are oils, fish oil, at one level or another. So you need to give an oil that's a placebo, uh, an inactive. The question is, is it inactive? Because in, in Reduce It, they gave a mineral oil, which is a completely unabsorbable oil that goes straight through your system and comes out, does not get absorbed at all. Uh, that's been a controversial placebo from previous studies that uh, this company has used. Uh, and it's co controversial here. So people have said that maybe it's that the placebo was actually harmful to people. It's not that the EPA that was given was beneficial, it's that the placebo was harmful, actually caused more heart attacks. Because some people, given the mineral oil, saw a small increase in LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol. And the idea is if the mineral oil caused an increase in the bad cholesterol, then it's the bad cholesterol is causing more heart attacks, it's not the EPA that's lowering the risk. So that's, that's the argument that's been out there um, certainly among lipidologists and people that follow this. Uh, but there's been some data that we have. Can we come up and look at this? I, I think this has been refuted very nicely. Uh, this is data from the Reduce It study, and it's looking at the rate of the primary endpoint here, which is basically total cardiovascular events. And <clears throat> it's looking at three groups. The, the blue group here, this blue line, is the rate of cardiac events in the people that got the EPA, icosapent ethyl or, or uh, VASIPA. And then there's two groups here. One's got an orange line, one's a red line. And this looks at the people in the placebo group who either had no change in their LDL level during the trial or those whose LDL levels went up. And you would, if this theory was right, that the placebo was actually raising LDL and that was hurting, you would expect to see the people who had a small increase in LDL during the trial, they should have a higher event rate. The higher, the steeper this line is, the more events are happening. So you would expect to see the people with the increase in LDL in the placebo group see more events. And actually what you see is not really any different, even a, a trend toward lower events in the people that had higher LDL. So I think this puts to rest this concern that the placebo was adversely active in the uh, reduce it study. And it points to the fact that it was really the omega-3 that was beneficial. So we talked a little bit about is it EPA or is it the dose? I think we have to wait and see, but my, again, my guess is it's primarily the dose effect. Uh, another question that's come up, confusion, I think, is because the name of this product that was used in the Reduce It trial, the, uh, what's called the generic name, we, we know the brand name or trade name is VASEPA, V-A-S-C-E-P-A. -E uh, but its generic name is called Icosapent Ethyl. And I've had questions, what is that? Uh, is it some special formulation, some special type of omega-3 that's, that's unique, that's made into a drug? Well, not really. It's really just a funny spelling 
of icosa pentaenoic acid, which is EPA, uh, which is a, it's the icosa, is the Greek word for 20, because there's 20 carbons in this molecule. Five, penta is five, there's five double bonds in this molecule, so 20 carbons with five double bonds, that's icosa pentaenoic acid. Here's the way we write it chemically. Uh, we refer to it as, so basically this is just EPA ethyl esters. Uh, it's not anything special, and most people would uh, understand it better if it was just spelled icosapent, ethyl. Uh, so this name was sort of made up by the, uh, by the manufacturers uh, to be the generic name in this drug. But it really is it's nothing any different than EPA ethyl esters, which are the same things that were included up here in the vital study, except this, in this study they used EPA and DHA ethyl esters to bind. Uh, finally, the last point that before we uh, wrap up here is a question that I've had, as many have had, what was the effect of four grams of EPA on the omega-3 index? What omega-3 index was actually achieved in the reducent study? Because obviously four grams a day was successful at reducing cardiac events, so I'd like to know what, how does that correlate with the omega-3 index? And we really can't tell at this point. The, the authors of the paper have not measured the omega-3 index. In their study, they measured the plasma EPA concentrations, which is fine. Uh, that, that's reasonable. Um, we are currently working to try to get some uh, comparative samples in so we can see what the effect is. It's uh, entirely possible that if you're achieving, for example, a, a 6 or 7 percent omega-3 index just by giving EPA, that might be uh, a good target value for you if you're just taking EPA. But we don't know yet, and we're going to be working on uh, publishing a paper on that point. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, we've had a, we put a blog up at omegaquant.com um, last week about, the, about both of these studies. If you want to see more the details in black and white, you can go to that blog. And I'm sure we'll probably be putting a blog up on this uh, talk I've done today, and uh, if you certainly have any questions, feel free to comment or write, write them in, and I'll try to address them uh, as soon as I can. Thanks very much.